So you've been decluttering lots of different spaces and you're seeing great results, but still, when you walk into a room, it feels cluttered. It just isn't clicking for you. It doesn't feel quite right. Well, today we are going to tackle what is probably one of the biggest clutter offenders in your home, and that is decor. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura, and even though I don't have a huge amount of decor, and overall, I'm pretty minimalist, this was still a problem for me. But a few weeks ago, I cracked it. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, all of those little knickknacks that are taking over your home. It is day 26 of the declutter challenge, clutter free in five. Almost there now. We are getting the biggest results possible from the smallest of spaces so that you can see a visible difference in your home in just five minutes. If you are ready to do that, then make sure that you are subscribed. Now, decor. Decor can become one of those invisible things in our home. It's invisible clutter. It has been there for so long that we don't even see it anymore. It just blends into the background. And when you've lived with something for so long like that, it's just so easy not to even notice it. It becomes part of the fixtures and fittings of your home. Some of it can even be furniture. A lot of us have decorative furniture and we don't even think to you know, question it or certainly not declutter it. And it's definitely not bad at all to have that type of furniture. Not everything has to have a use or be functional in some way. There is plenty of space for you know beauty in our homes and in our lives in general. But I think particularly with furniture, but just decor in general, because of that, because it is so invisible and it just sits there and we don't kind of interact with it on a daily basis, we start not to notice it. And it becomes a problem then because when we're thinking about clutter, that's not the type of thing we're thinking about. So today I want to talk about how you can make those things visible again, you know, bring them to your attention so that you can then make an informed decision about whether or not you want to keep them. You can make a huge difference in your home with just this one category. The first thing you're going to do is to pick a room or a space that really bugs you, a space that you have already decluttered or certainly decluttered some stuff from there, but for some reason that you can't quite figure out, it still feels cluttered to you. It still just feels overwhelming. It just still feels like there's a lack of space there. Okay, then we're going to go all in on this one. So grab yourself a box or a container of some sort, set your timer for five minutes and put all of that decor stuff into the box or container. Just move around the room clockwise or however works best for you and remove as many things as you think are purely decorative. I'm talking like figurines, ornaments, photos, candlesticks, even artwork on the walls, throw pillows and cushions, anything in there that is purely decorative. We're going to take that out. Now, obviously, when it comes to furniture or larger pieces, don't move those unless it is safe to do so and you feel very comfortable doing so or unless you have someone there to help you. But even just the small things can still make a big difference. Now, you're probably panicking at this stage. <laughs> Calm down. It's fine. You're probably thinking, I'm not getting rid of this stuff. Like, why would I take it out? There is method to my madness. <laughs> follow me, stick with me here. You don't have to get rid of anything at this stage. All we're doing is just removing it from the space for now. So get all of that stuff into a box and just put it outside the room. Now, walk back into the space and see how you feel. Right at the beginning of this declutter challenge, I talked about the echo effect, which is when you empty a space, you walk back into it and it feels much lighter, much more airy. And when you have that feeling of space, you're less inclined to clutter it back up. You don't want to bring things back in. What I want you to grasp here is just that kind of idea that that stuff 
that was invisible to you or all of that kind of small stuff that you didn't really think made a big impact on your space. Now that you've removed it, you can probably tell the difference. Again, you don't have to get rid of anything at this stage, but it's just to make you aware of that difference, make you aware of how much that stuff was actually filling the space. The thing is, when there are too many things for your eyes to rest on, your eyes just dart from one spot to another. When you've got like a little collection of things over here and artwork over here and some figurines over here, your eyes are constantly moving. They're constantly seeing things and that adds to that feeling of clutter. Even if there isn't that much, if your eyes keep darting, that's the problem. It's more of a psychological thing almost. But when you don't have that stuff anymore, it makes it easier for your eyes to focus on one or two things. And I will come back to that in a moment. Now, listen, it might feel weird. That's perfectly normal. That's totally fine. The reason for that is because, like I said, you have lived with that stuff for so long, you just became used to to seeing it. But notice the fact as well that it does feel a little bit freeing. Okay, now before you totally freak out, now let's start adding stuff back in. Only add in the stuff that you absolutely love, but also that actually fits well in the space. This happened to me very recently. My desk felt really cluttered to me and I definitely wouldn't have said it was cluttered. There wasn't that much stuff on it at all, but it still didn't feel right to me. So I cleared everything off it and I started adding things back, things that I loved, but I realized that they just didn't work in that space. And that didn't mean that I didn't love them, but they didn't work in that particular space. So I just set them aside and I worked with the things that did actually feel like they fit in the space. I didn't worry about where that other stuff was going to go. I definitely wasn't going to get rid of it, but I didn't worry at that time about what I was going to do with it. Sometimes we can get into that kind of frenzied place where we think, well, I have to make this work because I love this item. So it has to fit into this space somehow. It was the exact same with my bookcase behind me. If you've watched that video where I redid all of this, you will know that before it wasn't exactly terrible, but I still could not settle. There just was something that wasn't quite right about it. And I removed everything from it and you know, went through everything, kept the things that I loved and then tried to put it all back. But there were some things that just did not fit there. They just didn't coordinate with anything else. So again, I just set it aside. I didn't worry about the fact that I couldn't fit it into this one space. I still loved it. I still knew that I wanted to keep it, but I knew that it just wasn't working right here. So do not worry if you've got something and you love it, And it just doesn't feel right in that space. You know, it clashes with something else or it just feels like it's taking up too much space. If you feel that it's not quite working, take it out of the space or put it in a cupboard or a drawer where you can still keep it, you still love it, but it's just not causing that visual clutter in that space for you. A really good kind of phrase or way to think in this situation when you are adding things back in is visual simplicity. You don't want things to clash or to have lots of different things in the same space. You want a nice place for your eyes to rest, something that seems soothing and calming and just kind of draws the eye in, but makes you feel relaxed and comfortable in the space. And that doesn't mean that you have to stick to all like, you know, very bland neutral colors or anything. So let me give you kind of two ways that I managed to achieve that with this bookcase. The first was by color blocking. So I tried to keep, you know, like this one is all kind of pastels, right here is all green stuff. I'd try, I tried to keep each block, each cube, a particular color or, you know, in a very limited color palette. So that can be really helpful if you've got lots of things and you love them all and you want to display them all, but they're all different colors and patterns and things. Try and match up the ones that are in the same 
like color family, for example. It will just give you a much better feeling of cohesion in the space. The second thing then was symmetry. So for me, I just like things to be symmetrical, but it also gives that feeling of order and that things are in the right place and where they're supposed to be. Then what you want to do is try and create focal points. So remember in the beginning when I talked about your eyes darting from place to place, when you walk into a room, and you will notice this if you watch any of those design shows, there really is kind of one standout piece. Or, you know, that's why they paint one wall a different colour, or hang like a large piece of art on the wall. And it just, it's to draw your eye in. And it makes you feel when you're just looking at one thing, when you've got one focal point or very limited, a very limited number of focal points, it makes you feel calmer. Your eyes know where to rest. They know what to look at. So you're not getting that effect of like, there are things everywhere. You walk into a room and you think, ah, that lovely thing there. Now, this process is probably going to take you a while. You don't have to do it all in one go, but over the next few days and weeks, tweak things and see how you feel about them. When you walk into the room, just does it still feel cluttered? Like, where do your eyes go? Do they naturally rest somewhere and you feel great? Or do you find that they keep looking at things, um, even if they do rest in one place? Like, is that for a positive reason or a negative reason? But I think you will be amazed at the difference you can make in a room when you remove some of that invisible clutter and you make space for the truly standout pieces to shine. Now the next category can make even the most hardcore minimalist go running for the hills. But don't worry, we are going to break it down into small manageable pieces so that the whole process goes as smoothly as possible. When you are ready, we are going to tackle sentimental stuff. Gareth Mila Mahagwev. Okay, speaking of shifts, you can